Welcome to the show. My first guest is Ken. And Ken, I'm told that you choked your mother, you put a knife to her throat, you pushed her down to the ground, you punched her on her chest and stomach, you take her social security checks, and you wrote checks in your dead grandfather's name. Yes. Is this true? Yes, it's true. Okay. So, let's say you stand up while I ask you questions on why this happened. You can understand why I have a problem with a guy hitting his own mother, right? Yeah, I understand. And I, I don't want you to be comfortable on my stage. If you make your own mother uncomfortable, then you don't get to be comfortable, okay? <laughs> now, here's the million dollar question, Ken. Why do you do that to your mother? I do because I want to get high, and I know that she had the money. So, you're okay with beating your mom and putting a knife to her throat and everything else? I mean, I have a bad feeling inside, but... What's that bad feeling? That I may hurt, I may kill her, but I mean, after I get high, the feeling is gone. But the feeling is bad while you're doing it, right? Right. Well, is there some instinct in you as this, how old are you? I'm 24. You're 24 years old, so you're a young man. Correct. Do you work? No, because I can't get a job. I've been in prison twice, and she put me in there. And why did she put you in prison? Uh, for assaulting her and stealing money out of her purse. Well, does that come to us a, a shock to you that she did that? Yeah. Really? That's my mom. Oh, that's my mom. And she shouldn't do that to you, right? Correct. Oh, but it's okay to put the knife to her throat and push her and punch her and do that so you can get high. No, it's not right, but she should have just gave me the money. Isn't love a two-way street there, Ken? Yeah. Bob. This woman that raised, was she a good mother? Yeah, she was a good mom. Did she abuse you? No. Did she turn you on to drugs? No. Then why does she have to pay the penalty? I mean, because she put me in prison. I mean, I cook for her. She's sick. So I cook for her, clean. I do wherever I could. Whenever I was working, I gave her money no matter what. And so, then you, you what? You wanted to steal it back? No, that was fine. Because I, I worked. You, you can't get over the concept that your mom put you in prison. Correct. Correct. And I can't get over the concept of you putting a knife to your mother's throat. Correct! <laughs> is your mother in good health? No. Is your mother sickly? Correct. Correct! <laughs> if your sickly mother that raised you, that has done nothing wrong to you, was a good mother by your own words, then why would you do this to your own mother? Because she had put me in prison. Everyone because of what you did to her! <laughs> I've been told your mother's in poor health, she's got an aneurysm, and she's got a clogged valve in her heart. Yeah. And you're jumping on her and you're putting knives to her throat. Yeah. You're a good son. <laughs> I was being sarcastic, by the way. <laughs> and so growing up, what was, what was your relationship with like, your mom? It was great. It was great. It was great. I mean, when I eat, um, she bought me wherever I wanted. If I need $50, she gave me $50, no question asked. Did you, and she made sure you went to school? Yeah, I went to school every day. Did you? Were you involved in any activities in school? I played football. Did she, she come to your games? Yeah, she, she came to every game. She cheer you on? Would they pick me up from practice every day? I'm, I'm, so, I'm, something's missing here. Something is What kind of drugs are you on, Ken? I do crack and cocaine. There you go, America. See what crack and cocaine does? You'll harm your own mother, the mother, the single mom that worked her ass off to provide for you to make sure you grew up, that you were safe, comes to your football games to cheer you on, to one day have her son put a knife to her throat. Are you proud of yourself? No, I'm not proud. Do you feel bad about what you did? Yes, I feel bad. That's why I emailed the show for. And, so you emailed the show? Yes. And what did you, why did you email the show? I emailed the show because I was tired of stealing from my family, lying to my family, hurt my mama, and I want to stop, but I just don't know how. Well, maybe the crack to eat up all your brain. So you don't work, right? Correct. What was your last job? Uh, I used to be a correction officer. <laughs> if I ever go to jail, I want you to be my jail guard. <laughs> you were a corrections officer? Yeah. So you worked in a jail? Yeah. A prison or a jail? A prison. You worked in a prison? Yeah. I did a good job of it too. You did a good job of it. So when you were a corrections officer, and you're walking up and down the line right in front of all the cell doors, what about those guys behind those cells? What did you, you think about them? Some of them I felt sorry for, some of them I did. 
because you ended up in the same place that you were working at, right? Right, twice. Twice. So you would think that a guy who's working in a prison, walking up and down that and dealing with these guys, you would think, I never, ever want to end up here. I mean, I, I've done shows in prison, but when I was a police officer, I never actually had went to a prison. But as a cop, I knew I certainly wasn't going to go. I'm not going. I didn't want to go. I didn't even want to visit anybody I knew in there. Because prison's a pretty scary place, right? No. You get three meals a day, watch TV all day. <laughs> Stuff is a whole lot cheaper. Stuff's a whole... It's like Costco for prisons. So, weren't you getting that at home? The three meals a day? The watching TV? Things are a lot cheaper. Mom paid for everything for you when you were growing up. So you're telling me prison was better than home life? To me, it was. What exactly did you like about being in prison, Ken? I love prison because I knew I could hurt my mama and lie to my family no more about what I was doing. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> you were starting to scare me a little bit there. <laughs> but honestly, Ken, you got to tell me, you wouldn't want to go back, right? Correct. When you were in there, when you were in prison, you couldn't have had too much enjoyment, right? Right. Pretty tough in there? Did I you worry. get any beefs with some guys? No, I worry about my mind every minute of the day. But I'm, I'm saying, as a former guy, a corrections officer, we all, I, I, I know certainly what happens to policemen that get sent to jail. Life's pretty tough in there for them because now they're dealing with the guys that they sent to prison. Now here's a correction officer that you had to put the bad guys in check. Now you're in jail. I got to imagine you had a few beefs while you were in prison with some guys. No, because the state made sure I was safe. Well, they made sure you were safe. Isn't that nice? The state made sure you were safe. All right. But Ken, the big man doesn't keep his own mother safe. Now that you're out of jail or prison, where do you live? I live with my mom. <laughs> Your mom, when you got out of prison, took you back in? At first she didn't, but I told her lies that I would change. And eventually you she told her lies up. that you would change. Yes. Why wouldn't you change? Let me open up that cell door. I got to manage. It's a pretty good feeling walking out of prison, right? All right. Didn't you say I might want to change my ways? I changed for three months. Then I went back to the old neighborhood and hang out with the guys. And I went right back to the same thing. Why? Why wouldn't you say I'm going to stay away from those guys because I end up putting a knife to my mother's throat? Because I'm stupid. You're not that stupid because you wouldn't write me an email and ask for help, right? You typed, a, you typed an email to the show. So you're not that stupid, Ken. You know, you, you said you were glad that you were in jail because you couldn't hurt your mother. I mean, yeah, you're stupid for doing a lot of the dumb things that you did, but you have some brains in there. You know that you shouldn't be doing it. So what made you go back to doing that? Why not, being a, why not be productive in your one life? Why not be nice to the woman that brought you into the world? <laughs> See, as a father now, I, I probably couldn't even do the show. But now as a father, I look at my children and to think that one day that one of them would put a knife to my throat, that my, my children would steal from me, that my children would try to hurt me, is beyond comprehension. I can't even think of like what, what you did to your mom, doing that to my mom. Sometimes my, you know, my parents say stuff and I'm like, they're crazy. But I don't say anything. I keep my mouth shut out of respect because I love my parents. You think your grandfather, if you're still alive, he'd be really proud of you? No. And th that doesn't affect you anyway? I mean, it's affected me a whole lot. How's it affected you? Affected you so much that you want to stay out of trouble when you got out of prison? I mean, because right before you died, I wrote a check on him for $900. Now, twice you said, now you took your grandfather's money because you want the money, right? All right. To go get high. Right? All right. And you say you take your mother's money because you want to go get high. All right. So what if I wanted to go out and eat a big, fat, juicy steak tonight, and I came up to you and said, Give me your money. What would you tell me? I don't have no money. And if you had some money? Here, take it. Here, take it. Really? You would just give it to me? Yeah, because it's not worth my life. I'm not saying I'm putting a knife to your throat. I said, just give me your money. Would you give me your money? Yeah. Because if some guy came up to me on the street and said, hey, give me your money, Steve, I'd say, no. Simple. No. How about your mother who needs it? Like, she is sickly. She needs to, she raised you, her part's done. You're 24 years old, you're a grown man. How come you're not out there raising, taking care of yourself at 24 years old? <laughs> and then when you get out of prison, what do you do? You run back to the one woman 
that was been kind to your whole life and you continue to abuse her. You are a 24 year old man. Why don't you grow up and take care of yourself? You know, I'm guessing not everybody in this audience is employed, but you know what? I think most of them work and they're, you know, in between 20 and 50 and 60. And you know, you know what they do? They work, they provide for their families. I'm sure when you came out of your mother, she held you in her arms and had such high hopes for, for you. And you delivered on some part, you became a corrections officer and you became something that you contributed to your community. And what did you do with it? You smoked it all up. You smoked it all up. And now what does your mother have to look at? Somebody that she's afraid of. So now I'm gonna to talk to your mother and I'm gonna ask you to leave my stage. All right. We're going to meet Ken's mother now, Mary. Let's bring her out. 